as I've said in previous videos, using the cars on this list is not going to make you win, but it sure isn't going to hurt you. These are the fastest cars in each class for grand races. Let's go. Real quick before I get into the video, if you're looking for a community of racers to play with, join our Discord. There's a link in the description down below. This is also where I do all of my giveaways, and we have every topic in there from the Crew Motor Fest, the Crew 2, to Need for Speed Heat, Need for Speed Unbound, everything Need for Speed, and all kinds of other racing games. There's over 14,000 members there, so hit that link and join us. All right, let's get into this. All right, before we get into the list, I just want to tell you how I've organized this. I've got this broken up into the 11 categories that you're going to be using in Grand Races. That means no boats and no drag racing, but all of the other categories are covered. And within each of those categories, I've broken it down into the best cars, the contenders, and the viable cars for Grand Racing. And for this video, I'm only going to be talking about the changes. So I'm not going to go over every single car like I did in the previous video. I'm hoping to keep this a little bit shorter. So we'll be talking about the new cars on the list and cars that have dropped in their positions. Starting with Street 1, the new top dog in Street 1 is the Audi RS2 Avant. Now this car and the Focus RS are very, very similar in terms of overall speed. We did lots of testing on this and on races where you can test these cars, they come out really, really close to each other. However, the RS2 Avant has more traction. It's easier to control. It's easier to gutter. It actually has a higher top speed, and therefore I have to put it at the top of the list. But just know that that Ford Focus is not far behind. Now, just behind that Ford Focus is the Audi RS3, another new car for the list. This one is almost as fast as the RS2, but I would put it basically neck and neck with the Focus RS. It only has a slight advantage over the Focus, and that is that it has a tiny, tiny bit more traction, and that is about it. So those three cars are at the top of Street 1, and they're really, really close, so you should use which one feels the best to you. Now moving on to the contenders for Street 1, the Corvette C2 2.0 edition has fallen out of the best category. I've done a lot more testing with this car and I just can't put it up there with the Focus, the Audi RS2 and the RS3. It needs to be in the contender category. It's an exclusive car, so if you don't have it, it's exclusive to the Crew 2. And if you don't have it, just don't worry about it. But if you do, it actually is quite powerful, but it's a slow shifter, but it has a ton more power than the Focus. So anyway, that one has to be moved into the contenders. Now, a new addition to the contenders is the 89 MX-5. It is a very, very solid car. Great to drive, good speed, good cornering. It's just an all around good car, but I just don't think it's fast enough to keep up with those other three. If the driver was exactly the same and skill didn't matter, the 89 MX-5 is definitely a contender. All right, that wraps up street one. Here is the full list of best contenders and viable options. All right, moving on to Street 2. There are no changes in the best category. It's still the 911, the ZR1, and the Hurricane. Those three cars are insanely good, but not far behind, and for good reason, the F40. The F40 is actually really, really fast, and one could say that it's as fast as the Hurricane, the ZR1, or the 993. However, it requires you to be using a clutch in order to be that fast. This car is unlocked when you have a clutch, and certain people do have clutches on controller, which is very odd. But for most people, you need a wheel and a clutch in order to really unlock the potential of the F40. Now, a new car for the contender is the Honda NSX. I believe I had this in the viable category last time. It is a monster compared to what I thought it was the last time we did this video. I did a lot more testing, more tuning, and I think this car is just ripe. It is a very nice car to use, and you can definitely keep up with the top three cars. It's just a matter of driver skill. Moving down into the viable category, we've got the GTR Haru Edition. This car actually made the list because of my latest video. It actually is very, very good. It just lacks a little bit of top speed. So when you get into situations where you need to be able to keep up your top speed, especially through 
some of the high speed corners, it definitely struggles. It has a little bit of understeer, but overall, very, very solid car. And I definitely think it's in the viable category. Now, in addition to that, we also have the Carrera 4S Timeless Edition. That car, again, is very fast. However, it does sometimes present a little bit of a problem with the handling. It oversteers quite a bit, and sometimes you can lose the rear end. Anyway, I put it in the viable category for this go round. And then we have two cars that actually fell out of the Street 2 meta, and that is the Porsche Taycan and the Ford GT. Now, the reason I dropped the Taycan is because literally I don't see anyone using this car in the grand races. And it's not because the car is not quick, because it is very quick. It has better acceleration than basically anything in the class, but it just handles poorly and it doesn't have any top speed. So you have to really get the correct route within the grand races for this car to be a monster. Now, if you get that route, there's nothing that's going to beat the car. That being said, it just can't be considered meta because it's just too specialized. The 4 GT, on the other hand, just doesn't keep up. Now, it is good. It's not a bad car. It definitely is like right on the bubble. And I had to make tough decisions with this one. But I had to boot something out in order to put in the GTR. I don't want to have more than four cars in the viable category. I don't want to have more than three in the contenders. And I don't want to have more than three in the best category. Just my own personal rules. So the 4 GT, still a good car, just not in the meta conversation for me. All right, here's a look at the full Street 2 picture with the best contenders, the viable options, and the two cars that we dropped. All right, moving on to the drift category, we have a new king in drift, and that is the Hoonicorn. This one was just added with the new Hoonigan update, and it is absolutely insane in the drift category. Now, there is one slight issue with the car, and it bugs me so much because otherwise it would be the car that everyone uses, and that is that it is basically uncontrollable on the dirt. And there's a lot of like weird little dirt cuts on some of the drift sections in the Grand Races, so it becomes almost undrivable. You really have to counter steer a lot the second the car starts to go one way you just need to counter steer fully to the other side otherwise you're going to lose it completely that being said it is the fastest car by a mile in the category it is crazy fast the way it accelerates through turns even when drifting all you have to do is touch the nos and it's gone it is an absolute beast and its speed actually makes up for the fact that you can't control it on the dirt now you can control it, but it just takes some time to learn I would just say keep with it. You're going to mess it up a bunch of times, but just keep driving it. It is the fastest car in the class by a mile. And then because we have a new addition to the best category, we did have to move something down. And the one that got the boot was the Aventador. It is now in the contenders category. And basically any of the like hyper car drift cars can be considered in that contenders category. But I had to move the Aventador down. That kind of wraps it up. Let's go ahead and show the full picture of drift at this moment. You've got the best, the contenders, nothing in the viable category, and then nothing was dropped completely. All right, moving on to the racing category, not as many changes in this category. The top three are still the top three, but in the contenders, we have two new additions. I have since moved up the bleed. Last time I had it in the viable section because I knew it was fast, but it just didn't feel right. I had to get the tune right and I had to play with it a lot more and I did. And now I actually really love that car. However, it just doesn't keep up with the top three in terms of its overall handling ability. That's really where it struggles. Now, it does a lot of things really, really well. And I do recommend it for players that are maybe just not as high as skilled. The same way I would recommend the FXXK. But we also have a new addition to the class, and that is the Murcielago RGT. That car is crazy good. And if I could, I would put it in the best category. But I feel like it just gets barely edged out by the 458, the Camaro SS, and the Gallardo Super Trofeo. So anyway, it is in the contender category. And then we have a new addition to the viable category. I tried out the 370Z, and it is really, really good. It does struggle a little bit with understeer, but with the right tune, you definitely can make this thing turn and it's decently fast. I would definitely recommend it. So that about wraps up this racing category. Here's a full look at the entire category with the best, the contenders and the viable options. All right, moving on to hypercar. And in this one, we don't have any changes at the top level. The Aguera R, the EB110 and the Cento Dieci is still at the top of the list. However, I do have two new options for you in the contenders. The 458 Special is very, very nice. It feels a little bit like the Aguera R in that in your slower corners, 
you're gonna maybe lose the rear end so you gotta be careful with throttle control but it corners so well at top speed like just insanely good it, it really does feel like the agar r at top speed but it just isn't quite as fast in addition to that i've got the noble m600 in the contenders that's also a very nice car to drive feels just like the 458 in fact those two are almost interchangeable and because we have two in that category that are new we actually had to bump one of them down and that was the revuelto last time it was in the contenders now it's in the viable section so the revuelto still a great car but just not quite as good as those three in the contenders and then a brand new car in the viable option is the mc20 this car surprised me i didn't expect much from it but it actually performs very very well this is a car that you can definitely use as an alternative if you're tired of using the top six cars use the mc20 it's actually very nice to drive all right here's a full look at the hypercar picture with the best the contenders and the viable options All right, next up we got Alpha GP. Now, there are two new Alpha GP cars that I would recommend as the best in class. There is not a lot that separates these two, and there's really not a lot that separates these two from the other two cars I recommend in the class. The IVT07 is very nice to drive, very controllable, very good pace at top speed and in slipstream, and the same with the RB14 Disruption Edition. Make sure that you're buying the Disruption Edition. It cannot be the regular RB14. This RB14 Disruption really does well. It's got excellent cornering, very sharp and snappy turning, and it actually has very good top speed, just like the IVT07. So I recommend those two before you try the Alpha Mark II. And I know a couple videos ago, I was touting the Alpha Mark II, which is still good, just not as good as those other two. And then in the Contender class, we still have the RB18 if you like that one, but you might as well just go for the RB14. It's the same brand and it actually is a little bit better. So anyway, that's it for Alpha GP. Let's go ahead and take a look at the full picture here with the best, the contenders and the viable options, which there are none. All right, no changes in the motocross section. I still recommend the 450 EXC Nighthawk Edition, so that's what you should use. There are very little differences between all the motocross bikes, and I actually plan to test all of these bikes between now and the next time I do one of these Grand Race videos. So just keep your eye on that. But for now, I'd still recommend this 450 EXC Nighthawk Edition. If you don't, just use something else. <laughs> it honestly doesn't matter in motocross right now. All right, moving on to the Rally Raid category. There are only two changes. The Hummer H1 Alpha Evo 1 is now in the Contender class. That Hummer accelerates better than anything I've driven off the line. I mean, it is very good. If Rally Raid is the first category in your Grand Race, the H1 is insanely good. You just need to make sure you pay attention to the shifts because the gears are very tight. Other than that, the next change is actually the rough 3400K in the viable category. I had to add this because it handles so well. In my opinion, it actually handles maybe the best in the class. It's just not quite as fast as the rest of the cars. And so that's why it landed in the viable category. But it's one of the easiest cars to control. It's very good for beginners who are just trying to look to gain control of their cars on the dirt it's one of the best ones definitely the one i would recommend and therefore it's in the viable category and that's pretty much it for rally raid not a whole lot of changes so let's take a look at the full picture here in rally raid with the best the contenders and the viable options all right moving on to rally now there were two updates that i made to the list between the last video and now and that is the fiesta i've added that to the best category it is neck and neck with the c3 however the c3 just inches it out just a little bit when it comes to traction in those tight hairpins it's just got a tiny tiny bit more acceleration as well so the fiesta is right there but it's just not quite it like if driving skill is a lot better and if that person is driving the fiesta that fiesta is going to win but if the roles are reversed and the driving skill is better in the c3 the c3 is going to win that's how close these cars are now if the driver is exactly the same the c3 is going to win by a hair so that's what the best category looks like 
As far as the contenders go, I've moved the R34 Skyline into the contender class. It is very, very good. The only thing that it struggles with a little bit is tight hairpins. It's got a long wheelbase, and so it just doesn't have a lot of traction going into those corners, but it has good, good top speed, and I really like driving it. It's very controllable, easy to drive, very good slipstream top speed. So it's something that you can definitely use and beat some of those C3 and Fiesta drivers. And that's really the only changes for the category this time around. So let's take a look at the full picture in Rally. We've got the best, the contenders, and the viable options. All right, lastly, I have zero changes to the monster truck and planes. It's still the Silverado for monster trucks and still the P51 Mustang for the planes. It hasn't changed at all, and it probably won't until they add new monster trucks if they add those and new planes if they add those as well. And that is the end of the video. Hopefully this came out a little bit shorter. My recording time seems a little bit long right now, but hopefully it came out a little bit shorter. I'm trying to make it a little bit more digestible for you. And of course there's timestamps in the description uh, if you wanna check those out and just go directly to a particular class. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. Please do me a favor, help out the community, put in the cars you guys have been using the most in the comments. It's really important. It helps me just take the temperature of the community. It also helps give other players other options to check out. And that's what this community is all about. I just wanna make sure people are getting better at the game, including myself. So I'm open to the criticism and the comments, please. Put everything that you feel is the best in category. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Appreciate it. I will catch you on the next one. Trigger out.